I've been wanting to do this for the longest time and on YouTube there's not very much content about people filming with these camcorders especially to make music videos. Hopefully this video will show you that you don't need fancy equipment to make something special. A horrible little monitor, a baby photographic tripod and a bit of creativeness is all you need. From directing the on-camera talents to keeping the equipment budget friendly I documented every single step of the way. I even borrowed a gimbal stabilizer from our BTS guy to put this camcorder on. But above all, we made sure to have fun during this music video. Going into this, I knew that I wanted to complete four different camera movements with this camcorder. Number one, static shots. Number two, handheld shots. Number three, a gimbal shot. And number four, I wanted to use this really cheap old car rig that I had lying around the garage. And that was until the mishap. Get ready for a ride through the making of this music video on this cheap camcorder. So for the first scene, we put ourselves in a gale force wind on the beach right next to a tidal pool. I set up the camcorder onto my lightweight tripod and found the right composition. Once I had my composition where I wanted, I then told Joss, the artist, where to stand within the frame. Now camcorders are for point and shoot. You should be able to pick it up and hit record with a perfect exposure without doing anything. This isn't always great because in bright sunlight, the shutter speed and aperture are often way too high. So to get these automatic features to work in my favor, I use some Prestic and a variable ND filter to stick to the front of the built-in lens. After a bit of tweaking, I managed to get the aperture down to somewhere around 2.8 while the shutter speed all the way down so that I could get as close to filmic motion blur as possible. My idea for this scene was to start with a wide establishing shot from afar and slowly creep in. I wanted the camera to behave like a fly on the wall, getting closer to the performer. Use your hands! I achieved this creeping in effect by using the zoom rocker on the top of the camcorder. I wanted to make this scene more than just a wide establishing shot and all I had to do to achieve that was by adding a different dimension to the scene, by getting just a little bit closer to the artist for more detail. A lot of times with my shoots I have shot in one direction and just gone to the other side of the artist, thrown in a model or some props into the scene and continued shooting, giving the appearance of an entirely new scene. My idea of how I wanted this music video was coming to life and I was excited and properly surprised. It was looking so dope. It's amazing. Let's be real, the wind really added to the whole effect of the music video. The wind on the clothes, the hair, the huge crash and waves created that vibe and also uh, made the camera bail. <laughs> it really does, pretty marky, you have to go look. Oh, <laughs> cut, 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 cut. I then wanted to add in some dynamic handheld with those static shots. I always say with a lot of cameras, especially paperweights like this camcorder, your handheld movements can be very jarring. Very jarring if you don't either weight them down, make them heavier to get rid of those jitters that our arms naturally give the camera. And number two, do what I did here, which is brace the camera properly. Note the point of contact, elbows tucked in, camera brought in towards the stomach and your knees acting like shock absorbers. In the next scene, I borrowed my behind the scenes videographer's gimbal for some fluid camera movement. It looked mad silly, but it worked an absolute charm. <laughs> I filmed the wide shots first, allowing the viewer to grasp the overall scene. I then zoomed in on the lens to get more detail. I was aware that combining a zoom in on the lens with an orbiting motion of the gimbal would produce a heightened dynamic effect. This technique of zooming in on the lens compresses the background or brings the background closer to your subject. This in turn makes the gimbal movements even more exaggerated. It just gives the appearance that the background is moving very quickly. Next, I wanted to film my car rig shots. I wanted to use these shots in the edit to kind of introduce the performance scene of Joss when he was standing next to the vehicle. But as I said at the beginning of this video, that was a complete and utter up. Yeah, if I had to put the, the camera onto this mount, and then it just broke. I'll just hold it then. I'll be the car, I'll be the car rig. <laughs> so I just got some shots from within the car and by adding some nifty graphics into the edit, I was able to supplement the car shots, allowing me to get away with not having those car rig shots. I 
next scene? The next scene we filmed was at the basketball court. My approach here was pretty much the same. I wanted to get some static mixed in with some handheld performance shots. As that beat drops, give me something, oh, because I'm going to zoom out. Okay. You know what I mean? Once again, just using the zoom rocker on the camcorder to zoom in and out of Joss while he was performing, all whilst paying very careful attention to not only his performance, but the rhythm of the song. To get variety in these static shots, I changed the eye line of the camcorder to just below him from a low to high angle. I just used the crack in the cement and the leg of the tripod to try and help secure the camera in place at the correct angle. Before even shooting at the course, I knew that I wanted the scene to be at the beginning of the music video. In my head, I wanted the camera to start off on the basketball hoop, and as the camera zooms out, I wanted to reveal Joss casually walking into the scene as he performs. For the entire video, I wanted his performance, as I said, to be effortless. So the opening of the music video had to set the tone. In this clip, I'm showing Joss how I want him to enter into the scene, which is effortlessly. Like this, sides. And then as you hit there, it's gonna be like, no one. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And then it just. Okay. Makes it good? No one, no one. <laughs> At this point in the shoot, I felt like I had more than enough performance of the track, so I decided to add some additional shots, just filmed handheld, shots that I like to call portfolio shots. When I do shots like this, what I'll do is play the song back to the artist so that he or she can give me some nice moments while they're vibing to the track. You can use these moments at any point within the edit, just to add a bit of additional interest. While I was filming these moments, I got super lucky. I know it looks planned, but I promise you that I didn't pay off the helicopter just to fly past for us. As I heard the helicopter, I got into position, found it in the sky and just filmed it. It works really well in the edit. Helicopter. Once I gathered all my footage, it was straight to the edit, beginning with me choosing my favorite moments from the performance and the B-roll. And then I placed in these funky retro graphics in places within the edits where I felt like they made the most sense. For example, where he's driving, I found these great graphics of this car driving, so I placed them in there. And for the lyrics where he sings about nobody but you, I had flashes of different ladies pop up on screen. I then put the edits into DaVinci Resolve and graded it as best as I could. I mean, camcorders don't have the greatest dynamic range or color depth, so I went very subtle with the color grade. Aside from the grade, the second most important thing that I did in post was add a bunch of film grain to the footage to exaggerate that camcorder look. If you want to watch the full music video, I'll leave a link in the description of this video as soon as it is actually released. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, drop me a comment down below. Tell the YouTube algorithm that I'm not too bad. Until next time, guys. Cheers.